My name is Aaron Streets. I'm a professor of bioengineering here at UC Berkeley. I got my bachelor's in physics at UCLA. Um, then I went to Stanford to get a PhD in applied physics. And it was at Stanford that I started mixing physics with biology and kind of getting into bioengineering. My lab builds tools to study biology on the single cell level. And some of the tools that we use are microfluidic devices and nonlinear optical microscopy. And we use these to combine genomic measurements with image-based measurements of single cells. Microfluidic devices are essentially the fluidic analog of the integrated circuit. So in the same way that computer chips can manipulate bits to do computational experiments, a microfluidic device can manipulate cells or chemical reagents to do really high throughput experiments in an automated fashion. And this allows us to probe many single cells at the same time. In our body, there's trillions of cells, and for the most part, these cells have essentially the same DNA. Even with the same DNA, every cell is different. Not only do they perform different functions, but even cells that perform more or less the same function have subtle differences which really affect the complexity of the human body. And in order to understand how all of these different cells are acting in concert to promote the function of that organ, we need to understand what each cell is doing differently, when and where it's doing its job. We need to be able to study biology on the single cell level. And so we use microfluidic tools so we can easily move cells around the device, image them, and also probe the genomic information inside those cells. So in my lab, we use microfluidic platforms and we integrate advanced microscopy techniques with these microfluidic platforms so that we can both image individual cells and then analyze their genomic information. By being able to make multiple measurements on the same cell, we start to be able to understand the relationship between genomic information like gene expression and other information about the cell, like the shape of the cell or the distribution of proteins in that cell or how cells might be interacting with other cells. Biology is very noisy. And what I mean by this is cells that are performing their functions, the signal is very small. In order to measure that signal, you need very precise equipment. All of the tools that we build need to be able to get down to subcellular information so that we can extract enough precise data so that we can understand what's going on in that biological system. And that has to start with using highly engineered instrumentation to get at the measurement that we need to get at. This chip is at the core of our technology, but we need a lot more than this to get it to work. Sometimes we call these lab on a chip devices because we can do many reactions in one device. But in fact, we need the whole lab to get this chip to run. And so in that case, we rely on other companies and other labs to build tools that we can incorporate into our devices so that we can get the precision that we need. I was giving a public lecture about our work uh, in a venue in Oakland, and I met Jeff Wu, and he told me a lot about the ChemEx program. We had a lot of similar interests. He's a scientist himself. And so I thought this was a great opportunity to push our research forward. In the lab, we spend money pretty quickly. Uh, I pay for student stipends and their tuition. Uh, we buy microscopes, we build microfluidic devices, and we spend a lot of money on genomic sequencing. With this award, we be, we'll be able to chip away at a lot of those expenses. My group is part of a larger international consortium called the Human Cell Atlas Project. And hopefully platforms that we develop in my lab will be able to contribute to this project where we wanna map the type, the function, and the position of every cell in the human body the same way a roadmap allows you to navigate uh, the terrain or a country. 